Ayan, happy new year to all of you. Yan, uh, it's a happy day because today is the start of our ano, journey to eat your way to life and health. Yung uh, communion book ni Pastor Prince which was released 2020, I think. So this is only a short book. It's only 12 chapters including the intro. So tonight, Tonight, what we're going to do, of course, is to ano to uh, deep dive and dig deep dun sa chapter one, which is come to the table. And I would really encourage everybody to read the to read the the chapters because it will it will really bless you. And and ako okay lang sa akin na ishare nyo yung book. And then okay lang din na ishare nyo tong link para may mag may okay lang na may mag join. Alam nyo ba dun sa Wednesday Bible study namin <laughs> may nag join na na guy, hindi na kami all girls, guy, may isang guy na square well, na nag-revolutionize sa buhay ng buhay. Yung book na ito is the the book that revealed Jesus to him. And and um tuwang-tuwa siya actually and dahil diyan nahanap niya nahanap niya yung grupo namin, yung Bible study group namin sa Wednesday dun sa YouTube. Anyway, so 'di ba pinagpipilian natin yung live yung live the let go life tsaka itong book na to. Um, but I think it is God ordained. It is an appointed time for us to study this book because we are the time the times that we are living right now. We really need to have a uh, deep and strong revelation of the Holy Communion because it is um, it is actually Jesus. It's actually the gospel. So ano natin eh? um, na natin. So. Eat your way to life and health. Chapter 1. So, yung, 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 yung book, um, uh, yung book actually has, um, uh, uh, is endeavoring to, to answer many, many questions, important questions. So, ito yung, ito yung book, it's a New York, New York Times best-selling, best-selling book by Pastor Prince. So, Unlocking the Power of the Holy Communion. So, 12 chapters of, um, explain niya the the yung foundation of truth behind the Holy Communion. So, yung mga first questions niya actually dun sa intro. Did you know you can ask God for a long, good, and healthy life? You know, because it is God's will for you and I to have a long and healthy life. And actually, it's the the last verse in Psalms ninety one, right? With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. So. It's up to you if you want to live a long life. You, you, you can have as per scripture. And then are you aware that God is still healing people today? The God who is, who was, and is to come is the same God who heals, who healed every 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 person that he met, right? Every, every All the people that uh, went to him for healing, he healed. And it's the same God. And have you ever wondered if it is the will of God for you to be healed? Yes! Dito pa lang, yes, it is the will of God for us to be healthy and for us to be whole. It's not His will for us to walk flat on our backs. You know, because, di ba, sa ang, ang, uh, um, um, we, we learned in one of the chapters in the last book, yung um, destined, uh, uh, grace revolution, that what is the will of God? What is the will of God? The will of God, the reason why he came is he came to give you life and life more abundant. That's the only that's the only reason. Okay. So, no matter what, no matter how dire your medical report might be. No matter what, pag sinabing terminal yan or whatever, God can still turn turned around the situation. So, whether it be for you, for your for your friends or your, for your family, he he can he can turn it around. He's a God of miracles and whatever giant you might be facing today, he's bigger. You know, I, I realized, gusto ko lang i-share, baka makalimutan ko. Kasi meron yung life group leader ko, nag-birthday, and then I was praying, sabi ko, ano kayong sasabihin kong birthday message dito? Sabi ko, ganyan, sabi ko, blessed happy birthday, Kuya Dani, sabi ko, ganyan, for this year, I pray that you walk on water, uh, you walk on water uh, more than ever, um, have a deep revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then, and then the Holy Spirit just told me to ano, to, to tell him, um, go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know that the reason why God wants you to be healthy, one of the reasons, right? 
of of course he wants you to be healthy so that you know you you can enjoy him you can enjoy he, you your relationship with him but another another is so that you can go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is Lord and mountain i used to think that yung mountain before is yung mountain is yung ah pupunta ako sa pupunta ako sa hunduan <laughs> pupunta ako sa sa bugyas but actually diba in 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 scripture yung mountain mountain is a challenge Mountain is a it's a picture of a problem. Mountain is a picture of a giant. So ang sinasabi ni Lord is go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is Lord. So are you facing a mountain? Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus is, Jesus Christ is Lord. And how do you do that? Ah, how do you do that? By a holy communion. You will be strengthened. Okay. I'm I'm getting ahead. So our outward circumstances might be discouraging. You can see things that means they are temporal. So if you can see it, right, it's temporal. The Bible tells us that the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which which are not seen by faith are eternal. In 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 uh, in, in 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 Romans, right? God said in Romans one one seventeen, and the just shall live by faith, and the and and the just by faith shall live. So e- even if we are seeing it. In the natural, um, uh, it, it's not going to the, to the, um, for example, in, in case of Jane, no? she contracted COVID. But you, you can see it, literally feel it, right? Yung mga symptoms. But God is, is saying it's temporal. It's temporal because we, the just shall live by faith. So, bago natin umpisan yung ano, actually this is an intro. Bago tayo pumunta dun sa chapter one, which is come to the table. There is an enemy who uses the visible, the visible, the things that we see to snare you and I, to make us think, to make us feel, and to snare you and I and oppress you with fear and discouragement. And sometimes outrage, sometimes anger. But actually, yung pinaka-common dyan, fear, discouragement nowadays. So these are mind games. Mind games. Kasi dalawa yan eh. It's misinterpreting our fear is misinterpretation of our feelings and then misinterpretation of the scripture. So itong mind games, it's um uh, uh diba? it's uh, winning the battle of our mind. So the enemy, so ngayon maganda talaga na aralin natin siya. Okay? So uh bakit naman natin to bakit natin to dinediscuss at Jo? It's very much connected to to the topic which is come to the table. So yung mind games, it's a defined a psychological tactic that someone uses the which in this case the enemy to intimidate you and I or to manipulate for him to gain. Gain what? Gain your believing. So, it's the devil's favorite mind game. It's it's feelings. It's using your feelings, the way you feel. The I feel confused. You feel discouraged. You feel alone. You feel sick. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. So, it's the misinterpretation of feelings. Yeah. So getting us up to put the wrong meaning behind our feelings. So in a way, feelings natin is a you you can actually um uh treat it as a bell, right? Because it's very dangerous is if we misinterpret it. Okay, let, let let's go on. So let's the the enemy the enemy wants us to not think. Diba pag feelings, diba? Oh, ginagamit mo lang yung puso mo, hindi mo ginagamit yung isip mo. So it's less to do with thinking and more to do with how strongly we feel about something. So it's less to do with your beliefs, yung mga narinig mo na dati. It's about yung kung ano yung nararamdaman mo ngayon. Right? So we interpret feelings and when we interpret feelings separate from God's word, it's very, very dangerous. So it's So what am I trying to say? It's not our feelings which is the culprit because sometimes, di ba, uh, being a Christian, parang, oy, dapat hindi ka, hindi mo na, hindi, you're not supposed to feel that way because you're a Christian. Ah, you're, you're, now comes the condemnation. Actually, if we, for example, if we feel condemned, okay, why do, why do you feel condemned? Then you interpret it in the lens of the scripture, in the lens of the gospel. That's the way to turn it around. So the way to win is by inter- interpreting this feeling. So for example, feeling or feelings of discouragement, feelings of fears. How do you turn it around 
is when you contextualize it, when you interpret it in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So ano yung example nito? So ito, um, um, diniscuss ko in passing dun nung, nung Wednesday, pero gusto kong establish sa inyo. Yung pinaka earliest, earliest example, the first victim, victim actually in the entire, uh, in, in, since the world began, is si Eve. In Genesis 3, 1, 6, we know yung story, di ba? So now, there's this crafty serpent, was more cunning, uh, crafty, than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Eve, had, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Sinabi ba niya talaga? Ah, ang sabi ni, ang sabi ni Eva, and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Actually, dalawang, dalawang tree, di ba? It's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, ang sabi ni Eva, You shall not eat, nor shall you, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Actually, dinagdagan niya na, di ba? Lest you die. Pero at this point, it seems na, okay, 50-50 or 70%, Eve is actually doing okay. But then comes the next, um, the next, ano, the next, the next line. Then the serpent said to the woman, yeah, and he's, 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 he's now um, uh, um, uh, deploying, actually, uh, increasing, intensifying your mind game. You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat your eyes, you, that you eat your eyes, will be op- you will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, Eve has interpreted her feelings kasi nakita ni Eve, di ba? It's desirable. Kasi yung sa next, ano. So the woman saw that the tree was good. So ano yung definition ng, ng, good, ni, ng good ni Eve? Remember that the definition of good, what is the definition of good in the Bible? The goodness of God brings you to repentance. Right? The goodness of God brings you to repentance. Pero dito, Eve interpreted the goodness of God, the, yung, yung being good, yung good um, uh, as desirable to the eyes as, ah, I will be like God and I will know good and evil. That's when, that's that's the, now the, came the misinterpretation of feelings. Kasi it's pleasant to the eyes, three desirable to make one wise, and, and, and nangyari na nga ang nangyari. And she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband with her and he ate. So what what are we what am I trying to say to 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 establish here is that feelings the ba lahat ay may feelings eh but we can actually turn this turn it around f- turn it around how when we in, interpret it in the light of the cross in the in the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how do and what is the most what is the most powerful one of the most, actually, if not the most powerful um, uh, weapon, actually, that God has instituted and God has given us um, uh, as a as an instruction, actually, is com- coming to the table. Now we go to chapter one. So, ang sabi ni Lord, di ba? Come to the table. So, when we are feeling bleh, when we are feeling confused, when we are feeling sick, when we are feeling tired, when we are feeling discouraged, what is the Lord telling us? Come to the table. You prepare a table for me. Diba? In the presence of my enemies, the cup overflows. Psalms 23, the one, the, the beloved, most beloved psalm by King David, who is the greatest under shepherd, the greatest psalmist. Sabi niya, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know that the context of this psalm, I used to think a Psalm 23 as lush, green, parang New Zealand type pasture. But actually, Psalm 23 is the Judean wilderness. It's the Judean wilderness where in the helpless sheep, you know the sheep sheeps are very helpless. If dogs can bark, uh, um, uh, uh, cats can meow, um, the, the lions can roar, at may mga weapons sila, right? Ang sheep wala. The sheep is very helpless. That's why it's very super dependent on 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 the good shepherd. Tayo yun. So, in the context of the Judean wilderness, it's it's desert, almost desert, de- desert like. Konti lang yung crop. It's the duty of the shepherd to really lead the sheep 
That's why we are all dependent. I shall not, I shall not want. So we are not like in the, parang sa kaming dalawa ni, ni Eda, no, nagbabay kami, no, na kaliwat kanan, may, may mga grasses. No. Ang context ng Psalms 23 is actually, it's in the wilderness. It's in the Judean wilderness. And remember that the children of Israel was brought out of Egypt into, out, uh, out of Egypt into the wilderness wherein the Lord actually was the great shepherd. Diba? The Lord has provided them with food. The Lord has sheltered them. The Lord has given them light. The Lord has given them warmth. Ganun din tayo. He makes us to lie down in green, in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. It's the, it's the duty. It's the, it's the honor. It's the responsibility of the shepherd to find water, to find food. And then, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Lahat importante, but I would like to focus on uh, uh, your rod and staff, they comfort me. Gusto kong mag-focus dun sa verse 5. He prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Kasi yun yung chapter 1, di ba? He prepare a table. Table before me in the presence of my enemies. We will, we will, ano ta, we will, we will dig, dig deep. We will, isa-isay natin, imahimayin natin. So you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what is the setting of Psalm 23? So I alluded to you a while ago. It's not the New Zealand type, lush, may mga Bermuda, may mga may mga puno, hindi. It's the Judean wilderness. Hindi, hindi ko lang na-epace yung picture. But you know, but you know, more more, uh, more than that actually, what is the setting of Psalms 23 for us to understand? You know, the next question, to answer the first question, where in your Bible do you find Psalms 23? Where? Psalms 23 comes after Psalms 22, right? So 22, 23. What is Psalm 22 all about? Listen to its opening words, and this will surely bless you. Um, Psalms 22 opens with, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far helping me? And from the words of my groaning. Where are we when we enter into Psalms 22? We are at the place of Calvary. Right? So, You go through this psalm and you are closer to Calvary than any of the Gospels can take you because you're not merely looking at the one who is offering his life, but you are in his mind and you are in his heart. You are sharing and seeing his suffering in a way that the history of the Gospels cannot allow you to see and share his suffering. So before Psalms 23, right? Before nasabi ni David yung uh, the Lord is my shepherd, he had a revelation of the cross. Hallelujah. He had the revelation of, of, of Calvary. So, you listen to the heartbeat of the Lord. Sabi niya, they laughed me to scorn, saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me. Round, Bashan was famous for its breeding bulls, strong, terrifying animals. I am poured out like water, and they pierce my hand and feet. And I would encourage you to read the whole of Psalms 22. Where are we? We are at the place of Calvary and we're seeing the good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. We're seeing what it costs for Jesus to suffer and to offer. We're seeing what it costs this shepherd, if I can put it like that, to get into Psalm 23. There was only one gateway for the Son of God to become the shepherd of the sheep. And that was by the gateway of Psalms 22 and his suffering on the cross. Much more so, Dear friends, before you and I can get into Psalms 23, we have to go to the pathway of Psalms 22. What, what am I saying? Because it's a revelation of the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's a revelation of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're in, we're in actually Psalms 23 for me, but diba? Psalms 22 is the death. Psalms 23 is already the resurrection, right? Because at the cross, He cried, my God, my God. And it's Matthew 27, 46. Actually, our Lord Jesus quoted Psalms 22. At the cross, he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that you and I can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. So 
Ang sabi dun sa um, um, uh, verse 5, He prepares, right? He prepares. You know, ang, ang una kong basa dito, <laughs> so, arak in, in, ano, arak in uh, Hebrew, akala ko aray. <laughs> pwede din actually, right? English yan, array. He array. So, pwede din. Kung meron kang aray, kung meron kang ouchie, the Lord arrays. Right? Dun sa strong exhaustive concordance. Ang ibig sabihin nung He prepares for you a table is, he has set the battle. He has set. He has provided everything. He has, he has um, compared. He has done his homework. He has directed. Equal, estimated. He's he's the expert in war. So he's he's there. He's 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 the, he's the one who's prepared you for battle for victory. Ah, so tignan niyo yung pag sinen uh, pag clinic niyo tung tung file na to. Go to the Bible Hub link. So ano yung before me? Yung he prepares a table before me, di ba? Before in the presence of my enemy. So yung before me, panim or pane. So in your face. So, di ba? Ito yung one of the landmark studies na, uh, landmark lesson na tinuro ni Pastor Pins. When we feed, we fight. When we feed, we fight. In the same Hebrew, Hebrew pic, uh, pictograph, lamed, um, chet, at saka samek. Yung, yung lahaim, which is fight, and then lehem, which is bread. So when we feed, when we feed on the table, when we feed on our Lord Jesus Christ, we fight. So yung before your face, many times, we wish we didn't have to see the enemy. We wish we, we didn't have to undergo all of these things. But sometimes they're not defeated unless they, they're right in front of our faces. So kagaya ni David, right? He, David did not like run away just like si Saul, di ba? He was cowering. He was very uh, 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 um, afraid. But si David, diba, he ran towards the giant. He ran towards Goliath. So it's before your face. So, But it's, they're not defeated until they're right in front of our faces. Because when we see them defeated right before us, we will know that it was truly the Lord who gave us the victory. Before our face. And let's not be afraid because the Lord has arrayed a rock. Okay, ano yung, ano yung next? Yung table. You know, this will, this will really bless you. You know, yung sh- the ta- table in Hebrew is shulkan. Shulkan. There are four um, Hebrew letters. Shin, Lamed, Chet, at saka Bav. Okay, yung Shin, it's a picture of a uh, tooth. It's a picture of a fire. It speaks of worship. It speaks of, um, uh, it speaks of the Holy Spirit, right? It speaks of um the yung yung um, um anointing, okay? Ano yung an, ano yung lamed? Lamed it's a picture of uh, a staff, the shepherd staff authority. It's uh the thought behind this is salvation lies in the knowledge. So when we know the truth, the truth that we know will set us free. That's why grace and peace, right? Grace and peace in the knowledge of grace and peace is multiplied in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So the more that we know, the more that we know about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the more that we'll experience salvation. And the next letter, Chet. Yung Chet is a doorway or entrance or um, connection, right? It's a doorway too. So it's a connection or entrance. And then yung Bab is a nail. So, isa-isay natin na. Anyway, yung, alam nyo ba yung Chet? According to the rabbis, rabbis, it's formed through the combination of Bab, which is the nail, and Zayin, yung scepter. Ito yan. So joined together, they form the entranceway. So ito yung, ito yung um, scepter, yung Zayin, and ito yung Bab. So it now becomes Chet. Ganda, no? So you are, ang sinasabi, in the table is you have, you have, you have the authority. Hallelujah. And you have, ano yung Bab? Yung Bab is anel. And um connector, and it's the in the numeric val- value, it's number six, the number of man. You know that on the sixth day of the week, in the sixth hour, Jesus, our Lord Jesus, was nailed to the cross. So yung bab, di ba? Ito yung um uh, Yahweh in in Hebrew, in Hebrew letters is Yod He Bab He. Ito yun eh, Yod He Bab He. Yung mga first letter. Okay. So anong 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 ano nyan? Ano ang aso? Anong ibig sabihin nyan? So yung yung shulkan, right? Ito yung picture ni Leonardo da Vinci. Actually hindi yan. Hindi ganyan ang picture ng uh, um, table. Table is actually your reclining. Wherein meron sa gitna, actually it's uh, our servers actually are 
serving. Tayo, as the children of God, we're eating, we're reclining, we're eating, we're feasting. Ano yung, anong ibig sabihin ng shulkan? It's to consume, feed. Feed on what? Learn and teach. Learn and teach one another. And connect to His redemptive work. So ano yung shulkan? Ano yung, ano yung table? It's it's to feast on our Lord Jesus Christ because He's actually the table. Right? Consume. Feed, learn, and teach and connect to His redemptive work. Ganda, no? Shulkan, He prepares a table wherein you can rest. Rest and feed. Rest and feed. And while you are feeding, you are fighting. You are resting. Hallelujah. And then you know that the in the tabernacle of Moses, the yung table of showbread, the table of showbread, it's in, uh, the, uh, the Lord actually has um, instructed the craftsman in Exodus 25 to 30. You shall also make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits shall be its length. A cubit, its width, etc. Hanggang dun sa baba. So, makita nyo naman na it's made of gold. Okay? But gusto kong i-point out dito, which is gold, it speaks of our righteousness. It speaks of our righteous standing in the Lord. Right? And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. Always. You know that the table of showbread in the tabernacle shows you how much God enjoys communion with you. More than us receiving communion, the Lord, the Lord enjoys it. It is his life. It's his love language. On the table of showbread, the priest would place 12 fresh loaves of bread, representing the 12 tribes of Israel before the Lord every Sabbath. The Lord commanded that the showbread be placed before him always. Always. The Lord... So that, what, is, what, what am I trying to say in, in the New Covenant? The Lord is encouraging us to place the showbread, the bread, always in front, in front of our eyes. Always. Who, and who is the bread? Jesus, right? He's the bread of life. The table of showbread that is always before the Lord tells us that he desires to be with his people at all times. He delights in having us in His presence. Hallelujah. So, and then, and then in um, Luke 22 to, uh, Luke 22, 19 and 20. So, ano yung sinasabi ko dito na i-connect natin dun sa uh, misinterpretation of feelings? Right? So, the way to, the way to turn around, right? Itong mga um, uh, uh, strong feelings and strong emotions is when we, contextualize it when we use right um this situation or this this very strong em uh, emotions when we when we now when we now uh, uh place in front of our eyes right the truth of the gospel which is jesus christ you know that the holy communion is actually the gospel and he took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body so when we are feeling sick when you're feeling defeated Remember, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, this cup is poured out for you in the new covenant in my blood. No more curses, right? This cup. So when you're feeling condemned, when you're feeling discouraged, when you're feeling like uh, uh, you're so conscious, sin conscious, now, when you when you put the bread, when you hold the bread and you hold the, the cup on your hand, now you are, instead of being sin conscious, now you become Jesus conscious. So, for example, one of the one of the aside from fear and discouragement, one of the strong feelings na um, we encounter is yung outrage, um, self condemnation. For example, um, when we when we did something wrong, right? We beat ourselves. Right? Na bakit ka ganyan, Jo? Dapat hindi ka ganun. Ba't mo inaway yung kapitbahay mo? Diba? Tuturo ko pa naman. Diba? Ganyan. Bakit ganyan? Ano mo, the enemy is really, you know, bombarding you. Why are you like that with your children? You're not being a good example. You know, and then, and then, um, it's Sunday, and then you're teaching, and then the enemy will tell you, oh, you're, you're not worthy, etc., etc., and you feel very, feel very bleh. Now, these feelings, right? You feel it. And then it's as if it's as if um uh, uh uh when when you when pag pag kung ikaw lang yon kung ako lang yon parang you beat yourself oo nga bakit ganon ganyan ganyan but you know what you know what the holy spirit will tell you you are the righteousness of god in christ pwede mo sabihin i'm not i i i i i cannot be off the hook 
right right i i just did uh, i just did uh, my bad behavior but the holy spirit will tell you you're not off the hook you're on the cross ah ulit you're not off the hook in fact you're on the cross with who with jesus guys because because his death is your death is my death you were crucified with him i was crucified with him his death is also my death that's why when you hold the bread on your hand and when you drink of the cup you are declaring your death lord is my death hallelujah and you know what you know what and this is this is a memorial this is this is a powerful memorial because we know after his death right we were justified right we were declared clean we were declared righteous we were declared blameless and you know what happened afterwards we can now partake of the resurrection hallelujah that's why you can say the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack now you can have a resurrected life because of 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 um of his death which is in psalms 22 which speaks of luke 22 by the way <laughs> 22 then 19 to 20 hallelujah so when you hold the bread and cup in your hand you're holding the greatest expression of the lord's love for you so it's not wrong to say na lord you really love me for blessing me for all this etc 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 but there are days we're in where there are days right we're in um it seems na parang hindi feeling mo hindi ka naman blessed you know what the the most powerful uh um the most po powerful um weapon actually that the lord has given us is communion because the greatest expression of his love is actually is the greatest expression of his love is the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? Praise the Lord for all his blessing, for all his financial blessings. But those are actually fruits already. But the greatest blessing is the cross of Jesus Christ. So you when you hold the bread, artos in Greek. You know that super blessed ako dito. You know that the bread right when you are lacking you're feeling you're you you're you have this feeling that you are lacking you you're not seeing yet the manifestation now you you say because the bread speaks of your divine provision the bread speaks of your divine provision which is your position your position as a child of god is divine provision so now you hold the bread in your hand and speak, Lord, thank you for your supply. Thank you, Lord, for it is sure. It's not my faithfulness. It's not my obedience. It's your obedience. It's your supply. It's not my faithfulness, but your faithfulness. You know that there's a word, that there's a scripture for this. And Sarah, judge him faithful. It's not Sarah's faithfulness. It's the Lord's faithfulness, which is already spelled out, which is already done at the cross. It's divine provision, all the sustenance. So even when you're feeling weak, when you're feeling when you're feeling dizzy, the Lord has provided His divine provision, all the sustenance God supplies to yielded believers, sin by sin, to live in His preferred will. You know His His will. I used to for 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 a long time actually, for a long time. Lord, ano ba talaga yung will mo? Di ba tinuruan tayong ganyan dati a long time ago? No, you seek the will of the Lord. But you know that the, the will of God, right? The will of God is, is for you and I. In John 10.10, 10, God came, right? God came to give you an abundant life. That's His will for you and I. His, the will of the Father is for Jesus to go to the cross. There's only one obedience that matters before the Father. And that is our belief, our belief, in in the will of the father which is the obedience of jesus christ to the cross so ano ba yung perfect will na lord ano yung thelema is the result of jesus obedience to the cross which is an abundant life which is the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack he makes me to lie down in green in green pastures that's his will for you and i hallelujah so ano pa yung do it in remembrance right this is Ako talagang blessed na blessed ako dito. You know that remembrance in Greek is ana, anamnesis, which is the, 
Alam to ni Jane eh, because she's a doctor. Anamnesis. This is taking a medical history, which is the opposite of amnesia, right? When you're not remembering. Anamnesis. Anamnesis is recalling, remembrance, memory. In the Helps Word Studies, ang sabi niya is to properly deliberate, recollect, done to better appreciate the effects of what happened. Active, self-prompted recollection, especially as a memorial. That's why the Holy Communion is a memorial. It's a time of thanksgiving. Eucharist, ang tawag doon. Eucharist, it's a time of thanks. It's not a time of... Uh, of um uh of reciting your sins just like we were taught before but it's a time of thanksgiving thank you lord thank you lord that all my sins are forgiven yun ang communion so in the in the um when when you go to webster ang sabi dito is recalling to mind reminiscence a preliminary case history yan yung anamnesis you know that jesus history right has now has now become our history so his medical history has now become our history, our medical history by his stripes. You are healed. That is your medical history. Anamnesis. Hallelujah. And in Hebrew, it's sakar. The first time that it was used is in Genesis 40, 14. Only keep me in mind when it goes well with you and please do me kindness. So when you remember the Lord's kindness, right? What is the Lord's the Lord's kindness? It's the goodness of God which brings us to repentance. Ano daw yung thing na nagbibring brings us to repentance? It's the goodness of God. And the goodness of God is defined actually in the cross of Jesus Christ. God never intended for man to suffer diseases and sickness. Death is God's enemy. In fact, God never intended for man to die. Death came into the world because Adam sinned against God and the wages of sin and death. Miss the pangalawa, di ba? Una, misinterpretation of our feelings, right? So misinterpretation of scriptures that leads to wrong belief. So it's not per se our feelings which is the culprit. It's our believing. Wrong believing is wrong living. Right believing is right living, right? So when we believe right, we live right. Okay, so much of our traditions are derived from some pagan or man-made ritual or rule or custom. Some are laws, interpretation, deceptions, or even lies straight from the devil himself. For more than 2,000 years, religion has mistaught us or misled us, confused and twisted, brainwashed us into unbelief. Right? Na ano daw? Healing? It's not part of the atoning sacrifice or the redemptive sacrifice of the Messiah. Oh, healing is only for the apostles so that they would could come to believe. Oh, healing only comes from certain people, from doctors or certain individuals who are predestinated or yung mga pumupunta to certain places, to, to the grottos in Batangas, etc. or to Manawag. Oh, we should not discern the body of Jesus for physical healing when taking Holy Communion. Enough na yung ano... Diba? In a, we should not learn about it, basta kainin mo na lang. Our affliction is God's will. Ayan, ito, it's, um, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Kaya ako yung very gangho about this eh. Our affliction is God's will because He, in His sovereign will, allows it. No! It's a lie from the pit of hell. God is teaching him or her a lesson and they will emerge a better Christian once it passes. God has a plan with afflicting us and making us suffer. We should abide because of God's plan with affliction. It is necessary that this thorn in the flesh, the same that uh, what Paul has uh, experienced, and God is not prepared to take it away. All this are lies from the pit of hell that the enemy is using for you to have wrong beliefs. So, you know, you know all of this, all of this actually, the greatest demonstration of his love Right? Kanina, they define natin. It's the goodness of God. God's great demonstration of love. He demonstrated it at the cross. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And His death became our death. Right? And, and in the courts of the law, right? When Once you die, hindi, na, hindi ka na pwedeng convict kasi na, namatay ka na eh. Right? That would be double jeopardy. And because of Jesus, every believer is perfectly righteous in God's sight. His righteousness became our righteousness. Jesus gave His desire. This is the most important revelation actually of the new covenant. Once, and I, I pray that 
every day we have uh, we have a greater revelation of the the truth that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. That no matter what happens, right? No matter what happens, no matter what the enemy throws at us, you can utterly say, you can boldly say, I am made the righteousness of God in Christ. And the blessing of the righteous is upon my head. It's all paid for. Jesus gave his disciples. Okay, this is this is this is, now we are doing this. Jesus gave his disciples some instruction before he went to the cross. Watch, wash each, each other's feet. How? By reminding each other about the cross that we've been made righteous. Jesus told them that one day they would understand the meaning of that act of service to one another. How do we wash one another's feet? By reminding us, by reminding each, by reminding one another of the cross. And how? Through Holy Communion. That's why we partake of it every week. The side of the cross, we wash each other's feet by reminding each other what Jesus has done for us. And even to our families, that's why I encourage you, right? To preach the gospel via communion. You know, when when you encourage somebody, even, even if they are Christians, Christians, not Christians, use the, the, the story of the communion. You're preaching the gospel in Ephesians 5. He gave himself for her, speaking of us his bride, so that we could be blameless, spotless, and faultless. So the cross during uh, during communion, right? The cross is but one moment. It's our epic love story. The cross reveals our value, not our judgment. So that's why when we have communion, we're not supposed to, Lord, forgive me, Lord. No, you're dishonoring the cross of Jesus Christ. It's a time of Eucharist. It's thank you, Lord. Right? Thank him for his love for us, not his hatred. There's no more hatred. God has put all the judgment on Jesus' body. No more, no more judgment. So the cross sets the stage for the biggest moment in the story. Because when we have a revelation of the cross, we get a revelation of how righteous we are, and we have a revelation of the resurrection unto new life. So when we partake of the Lord's Supper with a revelation of the finished work, it is a proclamation of the gospel. And I like very much the mirror translation of 2 Corinthians 5.17. In the light of your co-inclusion, his death became your death. And his resurrection is your resurrection. Whoever you thought you were before, no more. In Christ, you are a brand new person. The old ways of seeing yourself. Now, you, when you feel, when you feel bleh, right? When you feel whatever, you say, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm a brand new person because of the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The old ways of seeing yourself and another person, okay, ito, it's very powerful. When somebody, especially a, a brother or, or a sister, offends you, don't see them in the flesh. See them in the light of Jesus' death and resurrection. See them as uh, in, in the spirit, right? It's the old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. Acquaint yourself and acquaint the way you see others, especially brothers and sisters, with the new. Hallelujah. Now, imbis na magalit ka, imbis na magtampo ka, now you, you get to pray for them. Diba? Most powerful, no? So, health is the greatest blessing. It is the greatest blessing in on this side of, of, of heaven. So, when Jesus walked on earth, he didn't walk on water or calm storms all the time. But he healed all the time. Every village he stepped into, everywhere he went, he went about doing good and healing, healing all who were oppressed. God is not the author of sickness, disease, and death, definitely. The destructive power of disease and death was released through the act of eating when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But God wants you to be, God wants you to be healthy, and Jesus' body was broken for us. So if Jesus' body was broken for us, then pray tell me, why are there Christians who are sick and even die before their time? The, 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 the answer is in 1 Corinthians 11, 27-30. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, not unworthy person, it's the manner, right? I, I explain ko um, in detail. Will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 
For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. Okay, yung, pa, yung first reason why many Christians are sick and weak is because they don't have a revelation of the commun- communion. They, they, they don't actually receive communion. Right? Parang once in a blue moon. Num- number, number two, the reason highlighted by Paul is not discerning the Lord's body. So we don't have we don't have a revelation of Isaiah 53. The word discerning is translated from the Greek word diakrino, which means to make a distinction, the bread and the wine. You don't lump it together. That's why when we pray, we pray separately. The bread is your body that was broken for me. You know in the in the in the um, tabernacle of Moses when we when they offer the sheep, right? When they offer the animals Hindi naman pinahihirapan yung mga animals. They just slit the throat, right? And then they are offered. But you know, in the case of our Lord Jesus Christ, He gave us extra. He could have gone to the cross and died straight. But then no, He went to the whipping post for you and I. Whip after whip after whip after whip until all the skin in His body was shredded. All the skin from top to head was shredded. That's why he cannot walk anymore. His his bones were sticking, right? So yun yung, yun yung discerning the body. Seeing your sickness in his body. So for example, seeing, seeing as COVID in his body. Now it's judged there. It's judged at the body of Jesus so that in, hindi ka na pwedeng i-judge, Right? You are no more guilty because it's judged already in the body of Jesus Christ. So when you pray, Lord, I see this COVID in the in your body. In your body. You, you paid for it, Lord. So Jesus didn't just suffer and die for our forgiveness. He also died for your and my healing. This is your inheritance. This is our blood bought, right? So... What does it mean to take communion in an unworthy manner? Ulit, ha? And do we need to cleanse ourselves before we take the Lord's Supper? Ito, kasi before, yung mga teachings of old, old, old. Right? Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. It's not remembrance of your sin. In e, e memorial, you know that it, it's a slab language. If you if you want to, uh, to make him feel love, receive communion. So I mean, do this in remembrance of me. So when we take time to remember him, he feels love, right? He feels love. He didn't say do this in remembrance of your sins. The Lord's Supper was never intended to be a time of introspection and consciousness of sin. It's a time of thanksgiving and remembrance of what Jesus accomplished for us through his broken body, shed blood on the cross. So it's 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 yung manner is yung unworthy manner as as I uh, we've discussed in the, in in the last slide right it's it's not you right it's not the person but it's the manner so you have to distinguish it you have to you have to distinguish what is the bread for and what is the wine for so every every so that every time you partake of communion your youth is being renewed like the eagles every time you partake of the Lord's body we are ingesting health vitality, strength, and long life. If there's a disease in your body, the disease will be supernaturally driven out. If there is decay and degeneration, the deterioration will be reversed. If the doctor is saying, drink the medicine three times a day, well, honor the, the finished work of Jesus Christ and, and um, do it as often, as often as you drink your medicine. If it's three times a day, then three times a day communion, right? Before you drink the medicine, if there's if there's pain, it will be removed. The results may not be spectacular and immediate, but they are sure and will surely come. And I pray you will experience them for yourself. So the Holy Communion is supernatural channel for His health to flow into our bodies. Simple things, right? But it's supernatural. The same Jesus who purchased the forgiveness of all our sin also removed all our sicknesses. And you know, it's it's very it's very um, um the Holy Spirit is reminding us that Jesus turned none away. Remember, whatever their conditions were, fevers, paralysis, deaf ears, 
or demonic oppression, He heal them all. Saan yan? In John 7.23, Are you angry with me? Sabi niya sa mga Pharisees, Because I have made a man, I made a man every whit whole. The Lord wants you to, wants you and I to be every whit whole. From the top of our head, down to the soles of our feet. Hallelujah. So, so, balik tayo kay David, kay David dun sa Psalms 23. You know that um, in Psalms, 1 Samuel 16, 18, remember na aral natin yung 1 Samuel 17, right? When we, he faced the giant. So, ah, prior pala 1 Samuel 17, right? Ito pala yung secret niya. Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and hand, a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. Ah, magiging maganda ka pala. <laughs> right? When the Lord is with you. Right? So, in, in Samuel 16, the Bible records that King Saul was very unsettled. His servants told him that he was being troubled by a distressing spirit. He doesn't know how to, mis- to interpret his feelings. But David knew. Then he advised him to bring David before him to play the harp for him, saying, that the evil spirits departed when David played the harp. One of the servants gave a glowing description of David as someone who is skillful in playing, a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him. Do you know why David would cause Saul to become refreshed? By playing his harp? Do you know why David could have um, such accolades heap upon him? I believe that the key is the last part of the verse. The Lord is with him. And how do we practice his presence? Do it in remembrance of me. Receive communion as often. So the early church, I connect it now, huh, understood how powerful communion is. That's why they didn't partake of it once, only once in a while. The Bible tells us they broke bread from house to house. Meaning, pag sa bahay mo, pagdating mo sa car mo, pagdating mo sa opisina mo, nangapit bahay ka, bumisita ka, nagmol ka, carry the, the elements, the tokens of His love for you. Na, nasa banyo ka, carry his love, his, the, the elements of his love. Now on the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. That's what we are doing. So, you know what happened? In Acts 4.13, uh, it's recorded, Now when they, the rulers and elders of Israel, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and unchained men, they marveled and they realized that they, ano, ano yung, ano doon? They have been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus before, but that they, they continued actually to practice His presence, to remember Him. How? Through, holy, through receiving Holy Communion. And we, and we studied this in length, yung Acts 2.42. All the believers, including the disciples, right? Devoted, proskar tereo, themselves, number one. Apostles teaching, what we are doing now, yung um, um, Bible study, fellowship, Number three, sharing of meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. Right? Devoted. Let's devote ourselves more than ever. Have a revelation of the finished work of Jesus Christ when we receive communion. So, partake of the Lord's Supper with a revelation of His finished work. It is the proclamation of the gospel. It is actually reciting the gospel. So again, as my last, uh, hindi pa pala, in the light of your co-inclusion in His death and resurrection, Whoever thought you were before in Christ, you are a brand new person. The old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. Acquaint yourself with the new. So in every challenge, oops, may pumasok. In every challenge, we get, in every challenge, we get to be in a position of rest. How? When we receive communion. That is the posture. That is the uh, position, our position, right? Our position to receive the divine provision. Ang sabi sa, ang sabi sa Deuteronomy 28, 3-8, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall, you, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, and the increase of your cattle, and the offsprings of your flock. In the original Hebrew, these verses were not written in future tense, but present tense. The truth is that we are already blessed. Just like in Psalms 23, those are, those are actually in present tense. God has given you 
first the firstborn blessing which is who is the firstborn the first fruit it's our lord jesus christ its blessing is our blessing therefore may god give you the dew of heaven of the fatness of the earth and the pl and plenty of grain and wine and in grain it's the bread and wine is wine is the is the is the blood right so if you are sick take plenty of grain and wine the holy communion take it every day take it five times seven times a day as often as you're taking medicine you can partake of the holy communion too the communion is your inheritance today the lord and the lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face it's not only sickness but it's if there's a challenge actually that you're facing right take communion and the lord will cause cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways and that my dear sisters is chapter one come to the table 